as you know, Trump is really unpopular with our mainstream media. And partly why he's unpopular, especially here in Western Washington, is because his administration is proposing to cut the indirect funding of NIH dollars for research. And this is really interesting uh, because this is a health channel. We're going to cover this and we're not going to talk about politics henceforth. But it, it is interesting seeing this article. I saw this on uh, Seattle Times magazine several days ago, and I was really curious. The title of this magazine was Proposed NIH Funding Costs Leave Washington Research Institutions uh, in Shambles. Uh, there was another article that just came out today. Trump NIH cuts will devastate U.S. research and communities. And so what's the big deal here? Is uh, the Trump administration anti-science or is there a lot of bloat in your tax dollars when it gets allocated towards quote unquote research? It turns out that in many institutions like Stanford and Harvard and uh, other private institutions, when a researcher is going to study, say, a new mechanism by which cancer uh, is caused or a new chemotherapeutic agent or a uh, investigate the purported longevity effects of, say, metformin versus rapamycin and so on, it turns out that when the NIH give uh, uh, our own national institutes of health, that is your tax money, right, uh, federal tax dollars, where do those funds go? It turns out that not all of those funds go directly to research. There's so-called direct payments, and then there's this obtuse indirect payments. And so what is that? Well, Tr the Trump administration is proposing that indirect payments are capped at 15%, which actually, guess what? This is what has happened when private individuals like, say, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife or uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, when they donate towards research, they cap the indirect payments at 15%. So this is actually common practice. So think about that. When there's a philanthropic organization that donates to science, they cap the indirect payments at 15%. But when the government, when you, when you, Sally or Joe Smith, are being taxed at, say, 35%, and some of that, some of your income goes directly to the NIH, it turns out that universities are a little bit more obtuse with where those payments actually go. Of course, you need to pay for Petri dishes and pipettes and to turn the lights on and the internet and some administrative costs at universities. But the indirect payments at certain institutions can go up to 60% for every $1 of NIH funding donated to research. So a lot of that goes right into the, the institution. And shortly, we'll talk about how Stanford, had, in particular, they, they used the indirect payments from NIH dollars to buy a yacht and, and so forth for the university. So it's kind of crazy that Seattle Times and CNN and all these other mainstream media outlets are saying like Trump is anti-science and the Trump administration is going to destroy research and so forth. Yet the Bill Gates Foundation and, you know, Zuckerberg and, and his wife, you know, when they donate to science, they cap it at 15% like it should be because it turns out that those uh, NIH dollars can be used for all sorts of frivolous expenditures and the government is trying to minimize waste. Before we go on, friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying this content. Hit that like button if you are. Since we're talking about health and metabolic health, I do want to remind you about a natural tool that can help curb your food cravings and support metabolic health. It's known as berberine. It is a 3,000-year safety record, both in China as well as India, as a tool to optimize metabolic health. And even what we found through offering this over at myoscience.com, help with forming healthy body composition, maintaining healthy body composition, and curbing evening food cravings. Berberine is best to use if you take two to three capsules of the Berberine Fasting Accelerator about 30 minutes prior to major meals, usually in the evening time. And what I love about Berberine, it's one of the only natural products that you can test and, and you know do blood ketone measurements or blood glucose measurements after the fact to see if it's working for you. So you can see what hundreds of other people just like you are saying over at myoscience.com. And uh, I'll put links in the description below. We're talking about the Berberine Fasting Accelerator. That's a unique combination of berberine, alpha lipoic acid, as well as biotin to help support metabolic health. If you want to optimize metabolic health in 2025 and beyond, you can save the code podcast over at myoscience.com. Okay. So let's get back to this article here. This was the opi an opinion piece published in the Seattle Times earlier today. The title is Trump NIH Cuts Will Devastate U.S. Research and Communities. As I mentioned, why isn't anyone saying, well, Bill and Melinda Gates are going to devastate research and communities? Because this is exactly what they do. When philanthropic institutions donate money to research, they cap the indirect payments at 15%. Some actually are probably lower. 
And so the Trump administration has targeted $4 billion in cuts to indirect costs for NIH research grants. Those funds, typically known as overhead, help cover the facilities and support that enable universities and academic hospitals to do world-class research. It pays for things like equipment, maintenance, and administrative salaries. So they go on and just talk about how this administration is anti-science and problematic and, and so forth. Uh, in my opinion, it's probably a good thing because as I mentioned, you can. there was an article where Stanford University was in trouble because they took a large percentage of the indirect payments from NIH research grants and they bought a yacht with it and then they used it to maintain the yacht and so forth. And so Stanford is not this isolated one-off institution and they're the only corrupt institution that is taking your tax dollars to buy yachts. Probably Yale, Harvard, some of these Ivy League schools that we hear about are doing the same thing. And so in my opinion, this is probably a good thing uh, for science because as Vinay Prasad has talked a lot about, there can be corruption in science as well and research dollars. And so we know it's very expensive to conduct a randomized controlled trial uh, and to do research, but also we know that these institutions probably have big budgets and rely upon NIH to give them a, a large sum of money, and they probably use some of that money for frivolous things. So I think if we're going to be taxed uh, you know, if, you, if you're going to work hard for your money and you're going to give up to 35% of that money back to the government, that that Stanford shouldn't be buying yachts and Harvard shouldn't be maybe flying people in, you know, first class tickets to, to Europe to go to a conference or whatever, the th whatever it may be, because there can be some frivolous spending there. Um, and so this is, I think, probably overall a good thing. It's going to um, cause these institutions to restructure, uh, to get rid of some of these administrative costs and um, to be a little bit more efficient with how they uh, allocate these funds. But it's in line with what philanthropic institutions are already used to. And so why would we allow our government um, to tax us and throw money at research, but it's really actually going to a private institution, not directly towards the research that will help the health of the people that are paying for that. And so that's, um, this is making major news. Um, I just think it's incredibly interesting uh, how, you know, the fact that if, if we're trying to trim up government spending, because we're in debt in America, we know that. We know that uh, China holds a lot of our debt uh, and beyond. So we need to be a little bit more cost conscious and $4 billion uh, is going to these indirect costs and these, these institutions, you know, Harvard and, and Yale and, and beyond, they can't really account for this. This is sort of like off the books. We don't really know where this is going. Uh, and so to me, this is not really anti-science. Um, I think it could actually propel science. And um, it, it's in line with what uh, philanthropic institutions are, are used to doing, you know, just they cap the indirect costs at 15%. So it's just, Interesting. I would like to know what you think in the comments section below. Will this stifle science? Will this um, decrease the the number of clinical trials that we're seeing for metabolic health and longevity and beyond? Or will we see institutions be a little bit more cost conscious uh, and less frivolous with spending? My thought is probably the latter. I would like to know what you think in the comments section below, my friends. I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for hitting that like button. Appreciate your comments, your likes, your shares. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.